Close enough. I'll go ahead and call our January 5th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. Thank everybody for being here. Um, the first item we have on the agenda is the approval of minutes from our uh, prior December 5th meeting. Are there any questions or concerns? If not, I will accept a motion. Okay, I've got a motion to accept as written. Do I have a second? I second that. Any further? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. All right. Um, quick housekeeping item. <coughs> um, SR 23.02, request of the applicant, Albert Cordy III, acting on behalf of FST Cena. Uh, for a site plan approval of Bell VIE. Uh, that will not be on our agenda today. He is asked to postpone that. That's the property at the northeast corner of North Bayview and Fairhope Avenue. So if anybody is here in reference to SR 2302, the property in downtown Fairhope at the corner of Bayview and Fairhope Avenue, um, that will be postponed. Um, we have a request to move uh, uh, item four, old new business, Laurel Brook phase one and two request for a 12 month extension. Um, we have a request to move that up to the top. Hunter, if you'd like to do that, if there's not gonna be much discussion with that, and it's a pretty simple one, I don't mind doing that. Sure, um, that is a <coughs> request, uh, it's two year, preliminary plat approval you know we have approved these when they're under construction they're very much under the construction one of the delays here if y'all will remember is um, this is when a large 86 inch oak tree was removed mm -hmm. by accident they came to us and with how to mitigate that so that was some delays um, so I'm okay with that extension request Kathy Barnett is here with Dewberry if you'll have any questions are there any questions or concerns about that extension request if not, I'll accept a motion. Move to grant the request. Do I have a, a do I have a second? Second. Uh, any further? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. Next item on the agenda will be the uh, SWMPP. Is that correct? Ms. Well. Ms. Well. Come on up here, Kim. And just to introduce uh, Kim, she's not at most of our meetings, but Kim is our, one of our code enforcement officers that's instrumental in getting this document uh, adopted and, or amended each year and approved. This is uh, part of our regular January meetings. So uh, I do want to uh, show a little appreciation for Kim and what she does on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we've got a video that's about five minutes long. And then if y'all have any questions about this year's amendments, uh, Kim can answer those in detail. So, y'all ready to roll with the, the video first, and then we can ask questions. This is the same thing you review every year, part of our MS4 stormwater permit with Adam. And let's see, we got to get through the ads. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. We ready for audio, John? You give me the green light. Okay. We have heard from citizens' complaints. The water is about a foot from my back door. The whole river's covered in trash. Our driveway's been washed away. There's an awful smell coming from the creek. All are connected to stormwater runoff. All are important. All deserve our attention. So how do we go about creating a clean water future together? First, we must recognize that as communities grow, the need to manage stormwater increases. Done properly, a well-managed stormwater program simply helps nature's water cycle, promotes community health, and assures our lifestyle remains intact and attractive to new residents and businesses. A survey of over 1,000 Alabama residents commissioned by the Mobile Bay National Estuary Program reveals six common values that are most important to quality of life here. The issue of stormwater runoff plays a major role in each value identified. 
In 1987, amendments to the Clean Water Act obligated the EPA and ADEM to require urban areas to regulate stormwater. The Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System, or MS4, refers to all stormwater conveyance structures managed by a municipality, county, or other designated non-governmental facilities. MS4 stormwater programs are developed to prevent harmful pollutants from being washed and or dumped into our stormwater conveyance structures and ultimately into our waters. The MS4 permitting program was introduced in a phased approach starting in 1990. Larger municipalities, having the greatest potential for stormwater impacts, were permitted first. In 1999, smaller municipalities were also brought under the MS4 permitting process. MS4s that are designated by ADEM are required to obtain a permit and develop a stormwater management program. Your program must be detailed within a stormwater management plan it is important to understand that this requirement is not just an unfunded mandate. It is vital to the health of your community that the public becomes stormwater savvy in order to safeguard water quality and quality of life. Without this education, the value of everything in our lives is diminished and complaints rise. The requirement states that your stormwater management plan shall include the following minimum steps, also known as minimum control measures. One a public education and public involvement program highlighting stormwater. Your education program can include brochures, public workshops, and a website with easily understood information for residents to follow. Include a public participation program to ensure community input on stormwater matters. Interacting with residents on stormwater-related committees, such as watershed groups, Alabama Cooperative Extension, your local soil and water conservation district, and the Mobile Bay National Estuary Program helps connect citizens to the effort. Two, illicit discharge detection and elimination. Your plan must include mapping and inspecting stormwater conveyance structures, such as pipes, ditches, and detention ponds. Ordinances are needed prohibiting illicit discharges of oil, grease, paints, wash water, and other pollutants. Three, construction site runoff control. Your program should include monitoring of all construction sites, even your city's projects, for stormwater impacts from land disturbance. Your program must include land erosion and sediment control, inspections that are documented, and you must have enforcement capabilities. Four, post-construction runoff control. Your plan will encourage the development of post-construction stormwater management to minimize pollutants in new and redeveloped areas. Private and public stormwater facilities must be inspected and maintained. Ordinances that require facility maintenance must be put in place. Five, participants are required to have good housekeeping in place for the control and reduction of stormwater pollutants from public facilities. This includes street sweeping, litter control, employee training and management of all environmental permits, such as scrap tire facilities and underground storage tanks, USTs. Six, stormwater program monitoring is required to provide data to assess how effective and adequate your program is at reducing pollutants. For larger and some smaller MS4s, this includes water quality sampling for pollutants determined by the permit. Seven, Larger MS4s and some designated smaller MS4s are also required to cover other items, such as industrial stormwater runoff, spill prevention and response, hazardous waste, and the application of pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. Eight, finally, reporting is necessary. Your program must document all steps and report to ADEM annually to verify that the program reduces stormwater pollutants and minimizes impacts to our waters. A comprehensive stormwater management plan is a powerful tool to help reduce complaints, improve the health of your community, and ultimately protect and enhance the things we value most. Your program may be managed through internal staff or consultants based on your municipality or organization size, trained staff, and budget. At any rate, it is important to realize full compliance is not optional. Many states are levying fines that reach into the millions of dollars. Stormwater runoff affects us all on personal and economic levels. It is a challenge you can meet as a public employee through your work with citizens and through your valuable community connections. 
Let's work together to create a clean water future for Alabama today and for generations to come. For more information, please visit the Alabama Department of Environmental Management's municipal page at adem.alabama.gov slash programs slash water. Vision problems. Try adding this to a glass. Y'all are not doing, uh, there's no one really doing uh, water quality testing now? We are not. Adam does it at some of our beach areas, but we were, we were, we had staff doing it and the certification expired. And because of staff changes at Weeks Bay, the recertification process is, um, it's kind of a gray area right now. So we're, we did it last year, but we haven't had anything to report for 2022. So we're removing it for 2023 because we don't have anything to report. So. And it's not mandatory, it's suggested, but it's not mandatory for our type of MS4. It's good to have, but can't get certified to do it. And so we, we do have a link on our website that shows where ADEM test, and it's for swimming quality. And What's the certification? The certification is through the Alabama Water Watch program. Do they which, do it locally? They do, they it, do it locally, and uh, Mike Shelton with Adam, I mean, Mike Shelton with Weeks Bay, he moved to Huntsville, mm -hmm. and the lady that's in charge of that now, the program hasn't kicked off for the training and recertification. So, but is it's the, local. Is the plan to, when that training kicks off, to have somebody do it again? Right. Christina in our department, she was doing it in 2021. She hasn't done it in 2022. But um, if, as soon as that's available, I th think she'll be interested in getting trained again. But there's two types of water quality testing. There's bacterial, mm -hmm. and then there's chemical. So she was doing the bacterial for, not bacterial, but for uh, pathogens, for fecal coliform and E. coli. So the, the swimming, where people are used to seeing the green or the red for swimming? Right, that's still happening because that's through ATEM, and that's still happening at most of our beach areas. We were just going above and beyond and doing creeks. We were doing Fly Creek. We had three sites on Fly Creek. Again. We hope it will, and twenty. Hope, hopefully, we can get it back going in twenty twenty three. We had someone donate an incubator for the test. They have to sit and and maturate for a couple of <laughs> uh, a couple of uh, months, and that that kind of gave out. So we've got to get that equipment. That's why she didn't this year. Gotcha. And then we have the certification kind of following up. So did we, we in past years? Didn't we review it, the actual stormwater the plan? Instead? You did. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah. we didn't get it this year. We did. We didn't yeah. Wasn't it my? It came in the, in the it was an email. We didn't put yeah. it in the packet because it's so thick. We sent in. Did, okay, uh, how thing, often does, does ADEM test water here? Well, they test after rain events or once a month. What's a rain event? A three quarters of an inch or more. And with the change, are y'all just <clears throat> just now, as far as the um, storm monitor management program? Plan is that just for inside the city limits? That's now? strictly city limits because we don't have any authority over maintaining drains in the county areas. Okay. And I don't believe the MS4 even applies in county. Well, they, the Baldwin County has their own um, MS4, and so we're MS4 partners. We share information and we meet once a year, or actually more than that, to talk about problems. And ALDOT actually has their own permit as well. So some of our boundaries kind of cross, but we, we stay in touch with each other and share information, cool. game plans and all. So you just need a um, motion for us to approve the stormwater yes. management program plan for another year. Yep. One of our requirements is that we put this before public review. So this is our public review, and it's also available all the time on our website. Okay. So I have a, a motion to uh, approve for another year. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed say that? Thank you. I'll see you all next year. Thank you, Kim. We'll see you in three more months if it seems like last time. <laughs> Chairman, before you introduce the next one, can I get the mic for a couple minutes? Yeah. Are you going to introduce yeah. Eric? I hope I was about to I got ask. two, two uh, points of news. I was going to say, I wouldn't say to the end, but one is important because uh, everybody needs to know who's talking on the end down here, our new face. Um, as, as you know, there's always a pointed position uh, from the, the staff on uh, the the planning commission and Eric Cord Cortinas is joining us this month. Uh, he's our building superintendent direct title official. official building official of the city. So we work together on a daily basis. 
uh, and, and come at things from completely different points of view. So our debates are, are nice and we, we decided we'd make that public, I guess. Uh, and I do want to thank Eric for, uh, as, uh, you know, as I do all of you, is volunteering your time. So um, welcome, Eric, and uh, appreciate having you. Other news, I uh, do want to wish Allie the best. She will not be at our next planning commission. Uh, so I do want to just. Allie will not be at as sitting in this seat any more planning commission meetings. So. Um, what does that mean? I mean she's not going to be employed with the city any longer. What, what, did she get a dispensation? Paycheck every two weeks, actually. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, we're gonna miss you. Has done a phenomenal job, and, Is that what and happened? you don't love us anymore. That's what happened. I do. <laughs> Thank you guys yeah. for everything. Thank you. Yep. So that was the two <clears throat> points I had. Uh, oh, thanks for the the moment. We'll start the agenda items. So you're right. ready. Next time on the agenda, you are 2301, uh, 115211 utility review for AT and T for 250 linear feet of fiber cable. Thank you. Um, and this is the area, these are some of the things, I am gonna take just a minute because we changed a couple of things and I wanna emphasize one thing in particular. But the area on the map is where they're proposing uh, these lines and this is working the right of way. Um, your packet had a complete list. We've been a little bit more organized on the new right of way requirements uh, the city uh, council did uh, adopt some amendments to our right-of-way ordinance and these reflect those and then the one I really want to emphasize um, is something y'all seen a lot of the construction a lot of that's been fiber and it's kind of beat up our utilities well when it hits a water line you know it there's a spray you know there's a something happening everywhere they're having to fix those and they've been doing that for the last few months but a lot of times when they're boring and they, if they hit a sewer line, you don't know it until maybe down the road and then it's kind of hard to prove it. So there is a requirement in these new uh, permits that they will have to video when they're in the right of way where uh, uh, sewer lines are, they were gonna have to provide us video evidence but when they finish to get free and clear to show that they are not, have not penetrated those lines anywhere. And I just wanted to kind of put that out on record because that that's, um, incredibly important to our infrastructure so but other than that uh, I think they they are meeting ev everything else and we do recommend approval of this utility review mr. chairman I have a question yes, sir. Some clarification the uh, the agenda states 200 linear feet of fiber cable in the Parkstone subdivision and our package shows a request for 1800 linear feet mm -hmm. what, what are we requesting here and I believe what happened here, the 1800 was, there was some coax in this as well. So I believe the larger number is the total and 1800 was just the fiber. But the linear feet, um, Councilman, I don't know that answer. I was, somebody else looked at these. I don't know the details on that answer. Yeah, so. I, I can get with John, but it's possible too. Our right of way ordinance only allows us to charge fees on stuff that is actually in our right of way, not in the private easement up within the private property. So we run into some applications where they may have 300 feet of road crossings in the right of way, but they're running 3,000 feet up on the private property and in our right-of-way ordinance the fees are specific to what is in the right-of-way and that's that's possible because we have run into that in other instances and I know this is not a right this section certainly is not a right-of-way and there might be some others there yeah. too uh, that, that do fall through easements instead of right-of-ways well any other any other questions I'm not sure I got an answer, Mr. Chairman. I, I got a guess. Um, and and where is something we don't know what it is. So we we the reviews are looking at anything over 660 feet. The area of that's the roads. So where it's at. Um, Isn't there a maximum amount per day? Well, for about? the for the locate. So okay. we only locate 750 linear feet a day. But you can um, permit. We can but approve. you can part because that per that permit for construction is only good 
for 21 days. Yeah. Or the locates the are good for 21 days. This is the utility review that's looking at more the area they're working in and making sure when they go pull that permit, they're meeting those guidelines. So we, what we do is take that permit into a utility review and I don't know all the details of the permit. Um, and I don't know if it's just a, an error in one place. I see 1,800 feet listed three different locations. Would it be um, safe to say up to 1,800 feet in the resolution? That way you'd cover it? I think you're, that'd be a safe bet. Yeah, there's no way it's 250 feet. It's like 250 feet. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, is anybody here on uh, AT&T's behalf? Okay. Uh, no other questions. I'll accept a motion. We'll make a motion that we approve uh, the installation of up to 1,800 linear feet of the cable in the Parkstone subdivision, uh, subject to the utility review. Because if I don't have anybody here to confirm that, I don't. We want to make sure that the utility knows. What's it, going it's on. 1,800 feet. The the 200. We wouldn't even put it on an agenda for 250 feet. So I'm, I'm confident there might be some, some in easements, but the total project is, is certainly not 250 feet. Also, subject to staff recommendations. Too. Thank you. Uh, I've got a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations up to 1,800 feet. Do I have a second? Hang on, just for order, I want to make sure the motion yeah, is I, I adequately. Yeah, I stated subject to utility review. I mean, really utility department uh, review, is that Part of the standard process, anyway. Under the permits, everyone yes. will have a chance for that review. I yeah, I think that's part of it. And is your motion also subject to staff conditions in addition to updates? Yes, okay. subject to staff conditions. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. Thank you. All right. Second. 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 All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is SR 2301, request of applicant J Consulting act on behalf of FST Section Street Hospitality LLC for site plan approval of the Fairhope Hotel. The property is on approximately a quarter acre located at 158 North Section Street. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and this has kind of been out there for a little while because this did have a board of adjustment case uh, to approve the use but for um, anyone that doesn't know the zoning map on the left shows the location this is um, at the corner of section in oak avenue uh, the aerial is on the left uh, the there is anybody that drives by there's nothing no buildings on the site currently um, this is in the central business district so uh, we do require buildings to be pushed up to the front lot line on and because this is a corner that is on both frontages the um, building heights meet the uh, 40 foot height limits uh, with one exception it's allowed by our ordinance but the um, rooftop terrace does allow elevator shafts and staircases to to extend to 45 feet um, and they are well within that. We'll kind of look at some detailed plans in just a second. Uh, the elevations of four, four sides are shown on the, on the screen. Um, and a landscaping plan was approved. There's one condition on this site plan. I'll go ahead and give you the, the, the generator location is, is uh, in the place where a tree is proposed. So that needs to be clarified. But other than that, um, the sidewalks are required to be a minimum of eight feet wide in the CBD. On Section Street, that is eight feet. They've provided that. On the Oak Street side, which has some topography, that it's uh, six feet. Uh, the zoning ordinance allows city council to make that call to reduce that from eight feet to six feet. So we do recommend that approval um, if you should as well then it, it will move on to city council for final approval um, those proposed sidewalks are constructed with the standard city pavers um, 
parking on site, there are 14 units within this building. There is no parking required by our zoning ordinance. This is the CBD and only residential units require parking to be provided. However, the applicant is uh, adding on some on site spaces. Um, there are two on street parking spaces removed for the ingress and egress of the lot but uh, six on site and seven parallel on street pace spaces are provided adjacent to this property that was discussed heavily in the board of adjustment but of course planning commission and or city council can can talk uh, again fences are not proposed or nor required except for around the dumpster location there is an existing fence um, from the eastern property line and a retaining wall that are proposed uh, along the eastern and southern boundaries that's highlighted on the the plan on the screen you know all the dumpster locations stormwater um we're going to we have a follow-up mop uh, project that we'll talk about some of the the technical merits but um you know everything on this screen we've reviewed and are satisfied with and and here's the site uh, final site plan um i think they've accommodated most of the comments we had uh, except for the generator and the tree uh, conflict uh, the landscape plans they are providing the street trees uh, as required and the landscaping plans um, have been reviewed by our horticulturalist and and uh, we are satisfied with those i think this is the location where the landscape plan shows a tree and the civil plan show an, a generator for reference uh, we did change and I'll, I'll state this we we did change the right-of-way ordinance in the future anybody building a, a balcony over our sidewalks will have to be 12 feet off of our sidewalk high 12, 12 feet in height um, this board of adjustment case with the site plan they're required to provide in that was submitted before we made those right-of-way amendments um, but even still, they, they did make some adjustments and get those up as high as possible, this lot does slope. So while they are not required to meet that standard, uh, they did everything they could. And, and on one end of the building, it's 10 feet instead of 12. So I appreciate the effort, even though they didn't have to meet that, trying to get with, uh, meet the goals of what the city has, has uh, made in, uh, an emphasis on. Um, here's some renderings of the building and the floor plans so I'll kind of go through those till we get to the the rooftop terrace there was two criteria we made there um, there's some distinction between my regulations and Eric's if you will when we look at building and planning <coughs> documents and building considers uh, a rooftop terrace as a four story our zoning uh, considered at three so we did make a, a amendment to our zoning ordinance to allow this with some stipulations uh, they are meeting all those stipulations 25 percent under roof and then the elevator stairwell can be up to seven and a half percent those are being met and shown on this screen uh, as a diagram there is uh, also a requirement uh, if anyone is using it as an event space and there will be temporary events they can have temporary coverage but the to anchor those, they should be structurally integrated with the building. That has been accommodated for. Um, with that said, on the site plan, which we'll go on to city council, um, so it is a recommendation. Staff makes a, a, does recommend approval of this with one uh, condition to relocate either the generator or the conflicting tree uh, subject to planning staff approval. Be happy to, Jay um, Watkins here and Paul with the with uh, Jade engineering is here if you have any questions thank you hunter um, you like to come up with this time and that anything <clears throat> evening my name is Paul Marcinko with Jade consulting thank you hunter for the presentation um, the conflict that you mentioned in the condition is no issue we can resolve that it's a minor conflict with the tree and the generator so we can relocate one of those two um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have and uh, happy to listen I appreciate staff's uh, time to review this with us so we can make make the revisions needed and present this tonight all right thank you anybody have a question I was wondering about this time uh, I had a couple questions 
The easy one is just the, the dumpster access. Does that intend for something to drive up on the curb, or is it just a, you're wheeling things out across the curb? What's going on with that? So as part, it's, can I put that up on the screen? Sure. Okay. Here, get you back and forth, Got it. Uh, which one you, you the site plan? Yeah, just one of the site plans just to kind of look at it. Even that one will work right there. So sort of integrated in with our driveway, as you can see up in the top right corner. Um, our driveway would be there, sidewalk running across, and then the dumpster would be on private property and present to the street in an enclosure. Um, the sidewalk would be in front of it, but more or less a driveway. So that entire concrete driveway there would allow access for the dumpster. Uh, so the truck could pick up. Okay, so the truck is coming. Is, is the, the sidewalk's turned into a driveway. The truck goes across it. Yes, same way you enclosed. would. Correct, like a crosswalk across the driveway. Okay. Won't that take another space? Parking space. So that is lined up with that parking space in that location. Um, the driveway is you know, X'd off. The cut, the cut, the Number cut. nine. If the car is parked there, you couldn't drive. You up couldn't pick to the up dumpster. trash. No, hardly garbage. Correct. So the dumpster could be could be rolled out to be accommodated. That could also be considered an employee spot, or the dumpster pickup can just be re rescheduled for another time. But they are planning on a dumpster, not a bunch of little. Correct. Yeah, I I don't think that with the amount of trash we would want to have that many for uh, Public Works to pick up. That's, it's just surprising how many people and restaurants do that downtown with a little right. bitty one. And I do want to caution if it's a rollout. Um, be very considerate of the grade because we did prove this on one project and once they loaded that up, they figured out you can't roll this up a certain grade. So there is sure. a, you know which project I'm talking about. That's not that one. I know of the other one where they put it right in front of the electrical panel and when they picked up the dumpster, they actually oh. hit the panel in the service on the side of the building. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, I'm the, Don't the wise uh, Henry Loss. The Henry Loss there. Yeah. They, put that in and couldn't get it up the hill so you know, just so that's consider on a little bitty that's why they converted to all the many many personal just wanted to make sure it had been thought through because of places like that that I also just had a blanket question mm -hmm. um, the renderings are beautiful um, I, I did I noticed on the uh, east side it looks like maybe as civil progressed and you figured out ADA accessibility, it changed a little bit from what was in the renderings. Correct. And just because this always comes up, I wanted to ask, are there any other changes that have been made that where the, the final building will be significantly different from the renderings that, if so, we point them out? No, the, ren the renderings are, are very close to what, what that is. The actual color elevations that were, sorry, I don't want to just flip back and forth constantly. There were color. looks different from the elevations too. So the color elevations, that's architectural kind of, of what that looks like, just to show that general grade change. If you actually look at the grading plan of, of what we've done to be able to create the parking, the ADA requirements to be able to get there, so you have a handicapped parking spot, as well as the delivery, or not delivery, but the drop-off area. There's a small concrete area there that's also ADA compliant, mm -hmm. um, and that area allows a, a vehicle to park kind of to unload their, their luggage, and that's not even included in the parking requirements or the, the parking on site. I, I didn't um, necessarily have an issue with that ramp or the addition. It just made me, it's not uncommon to do renderings earlier and then things evolve, and so I wanted to ask the question, has anything else evolved that we Understood. might want to see? Absolutely. There's been a lot of coordination uh, between between us and the architect. Uh, so even just looking at this right here, we you know you can see the slope of the driveway coming in, and then the flatter area, which would be the ADA compliant area. I think Jay actually helped answer that before the meeting, so it'd be a good good opportunity to. Okay. It's, to I guess I'm looking one. at the landscape plan. It looks like there's planters and a step and a ramp, not just that seamless curb ramp. So maybe I'm, I don't mean to belabor that. Point. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. I'm Jay Watkins. Um, my wife and I are the owners of Section Street Hospitality and are, are putting this project together. And I appreciate y'all's time on this, and particularly the staffs, because we, we have been working on this for several, several months. Um, to your question about the renderings versus the site plan, um, I think you would see on the Oak Street side, we had to bring the stairway in uh, to come off of the right of way some. So that, that has changed a little bit. Uh, the renderings don't reflect any doorways. Oh, those were open arches into the courtyard inside. Mm -hmm. We've in, the, now determined that 
because of the humidity and the rain and everything else in this area, we have closed in that interior atrium now, and so there will be glass doors, and that will be heated and cooled uh, throughout. So those glass doors are not reflected on the renderings. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else significant there, but I don't believe so. Um, but those are the only changes I could note from those the original renderings or what we've been looking at since uh, inception, probably a year ago. Okay. Uh, but well, those you. changes were made to meet some of the compliance issues with the staff. Thank you, Jack. And all of the water meters, electric boxes, everything's on the private property. Correct. Yes, there's, there was a comment and concern about any fire suppression backflows being in the right of way. They will not be. They're designed to be on site, uh, FTC on site, backflows on site. Good. And we do have an MOP right after this that we'll talk a little bit about in the conditions, but yes, we're, we're, we're satisfied with the, with the portions of those. And I think uh, the really good job has been done to coordinate all of those where those locations are. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant? Mr. Chairman, I, good, have, I, have a, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, would you go to the rooftop plan, please, Paul? I'll, I'll make a comment. I, uh, right I agree with Rebecca. Wrong. This is this is a very nice plan, by the way, very nice. So you have an outdoor grilling area uh, on the lower right uh, as you look at the plan. Uh, I also note that on the structures, other than those used for elevators and stairwells, we're at 24.9 percent of the total square foot or we're, we're below the 25 percent <coughs> limit <coughs> but on the outdoor grilling area is that going to require a commercial vent and would that require a structure and I would have never thought to ask this question if I didn't go to the Methodist Church where they have an outdoor grilling area that requires a vented hood which was it's kind of surprising to me so Yes, sir. The, no, question. We, uh, the intent there is we don't intend to have any true kitchen space. We have catering areas where there'll be warmers and that kind of thing. We don't intend to have any kind of full service kitchen. So many of the events that we go to in this area, these caterers, they want to fry oysters, they want to fry shrimp, they want to you know, grill a tenderloin or something like that. So this is intended to be strictly an outdoor area for that type of application. We don't intend to have gas grills. We don't intend to have anything like that that require a vent hood or anything of that nature. I mean, truly a, a grill station or you know, somewhere to fry fish or fry oysters so that it's not in an interior room that then is going to have the odor or it, it intended to be separated away from the actual event space. Yeah. So is that, yeah, what, you what, don't require that? Yeah, or? what we'll wind up doing is when we get the construction plans and the sprinkler plans, if we have possible hazard or, or possible uh, cooking that'll happen up there. The sprinkler plan may require sidewall sprinkler heads on the back side of what is the catering kitchen to cover that. That's how we do it with residential right. properties. If they've got a grill or they've got a porch, you can have sidewall head sprinkler heads that come out. So we'll evaluate that when and, we get the sprinkler And I would plan. welcome the opportunity because the idea would be that we would just have natural gas hookups there and if the caterer brings a grill or caterer brings a, a fry station, they would. Yeah plug in and be, go be, be, be going. Yeah, from experience, we had a condo project in Orange Beach where they had gas grills out on the porches and we had full sprinkler coverage on those porches. Here, since you don't have a cover, they would just come out the side of the back of the, of the catering kitchen area. Okay. I just didn't want us to get up against that 25% limit and say, uh-oh, now we're exceeding it. Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Right. Any further questions? All right, thank you very much. Um, this is not a public hearing. Does anybody from the audience have any questions or concerns about this item? All right, commissioners. I move to approve the request for the applicant. I have a uh, motion to approve the request. Do I have a second? Second. Just sorry, to clarify, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, with the staff recommendations. With staff recommendations. Thank you. Okay. And I have a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Do I have a second? Or to recommend second. All right. A motion to second. A, a, a motion to approve. Uh, yeah, I have a motion to the and a second to approve subject to staff recommendations. Any further discussion? <laughs> all right. It's okay all, with you. Oh, I'm sorry. All, right. all in yeah. favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Yeah, there is. <laughs>
like I'm the biggest stick in the <laughs> Okay, uh, if okay with everything, this is the absolute same project, everything the same. I'm just going to highlight the differences uh, because this is the MOP portion. This it does get approved uh, with the with the planning commission, so it does not move forward. And for the public's sake, this is more the technical reviews. Uh, they are very much uh, integral reviews together. Um, our utilities have worked um, with. Uh, with the applicants and you know everything is is um, approved or handled via conditions of the approval so um, without getting details there's some there's some drainage work that's not got to be that's got to be relocated and tied in we unfortunately we just this we the city just went in and did some work right in that area uh, right where their planned ingress and egress is so we're gonna have, they're gonna have to relocate uh, that s1 inlet top um, gas is available uh, on Oak Street and they don't have any problems getting that power will be underground from the existing line on Oak I'm sorry on Section Street uh, sewer will have to be extended down to handle sorry water will have to be extended uh, sewer will gravity feed in the existing sewer um, again landscape plans parking and sidewalk work we, we covered and this is just a copy and paste of those summaries because they're part of each review same site plan review or same site plan here same landscape plan same elevations same renderings um, we have the same recommendation of approval but with three separate conditions one is the approval of the case that will move on to city council and two is the fire protection line that shall be shown uh, as shown in the plan shown in the plans and the six inch water line shown shall be intended to be serviced and will be labeled on the plans. There is some aid to construction costs. They're still working on some of those details. So um, we have a recommendation of approval. If you'll have any questions related to these things, and I think you, I didn't go over the dumpster, but that was kind of handled under this review or the, the rollout, but uh, be happy to talk about it further if you'd like. I've got one question, Hunter, and this isn't really super specific to this project but in general as I you know sit here and I see a lot of these projects coming in or like trays that was going to come in earlier um, case like this we're in an area that's you know pretty tight on parking which is good it means we have a lot of people here and I think this project will be great for the central business district with the people coming to the hotel and frequenting the businesses and you know the comprehensive plan talks about really protecting and promoting the central business district because that's you know the heart and the soul of Fairhope and I think that it you know, totally fits in with the conference plan and love this this project overall. Um, you know, love it to be a little bit shorter and have a little green, but you know, it, yeah. it, but, but you know, that, that's how it has to be. But, you know, we go to a place that doesn't have very good parking, we give up two public parking spaces. You know, Trace, we would have given up two public parking spaces. I drive to the back of the monkey bar where we've given up three public parking spaces where I don't see any reason where we had to give up more than one, um, you know, with their gate. Do other municipalities give those up that easily, or do they charge when they give up a public parking space? When you see what a space is is valued at to a downtown area, you know, it's pretty tremendous. And I understand, you know, in this area, you know, you've got a hotel, you're bringing a lot of people in, and that's going to really help the area. But like when you give up three spaces, the Monkey Bar, just carte blanche. Um, rather than making them maybe work it out and say, well, hey, if we're paying $100,000 of space, you know, to the city to go into some kind of a fund, uh, maybe we can just do away with one. Yeah. You know, maybe we can work with you know, And I don't see any reason why that one couldn't be. Or you, you, you go to places where you see all the no parking signs and they've got their, you know, their parking head on like in front of Ravenite where half the cars on public space and half the cars on private space, but there's no public parking there. Mm -hmm. but there's no sidewalk there i mean has there been uh, how do other municipalities handle that or do you know and, and you know we don't have to answer that now but it's just something that i i think we should certainly look at you mm -hmm. know maybe some type of a, a fee charged for each space given up in the future and and certainly don't know what every jurisdiction but we have looked at, and we we can discuss this in part of this <coughs> review as we have in some some other projects and it's always a little bit of a a balancing act um, we don't require parking 
and we don't have setbacks. But when somebody, as we've seen, when somebody tries to cover the whole lot, there's no parking for anybody. So then the burden of whatever is happening there is 100% going to fall on the public spaces. Mm -hmm. And they, so, but in that case, they don't take one away for ingress because they don't need it. Um, but I do think that in lieu of fee is something to look at because, in, you know, they, there is public parking taken away here. I think at the end of the day, what based on our regulations today, this is a good, uh, it mediates all of those challenges and, and provides a good solution. But I do think, and you know, we, we did create an ad hoc parking committee that is completely staff fault that John's chairing uh, to, we, with some jurisdictional things happening last year, it's been hard to get to some of those, but that is part of that, those goals to evaluate um, or do some type projects need on-site parking requirements? Uh, but things like the monkey bar, which had drive-through tellers, yeah. you know, that didn't come to to us for um, looking at that. It was kind of historic. There, there were never any parking spaces there. But I think there's some opportunity to even look at all of Bancroft to well, to add some parking. Never. I mean, whenever you know Mannix had it, yeah. You know, but just saying. Um, yeah. But but I've I've said my piece and that's not necessarily the time for it but that is something that I hope the parking committee will look into. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to, if you want to, sometime sit down and give you a council perspective on some of the parking issues and some of the solutions that we've talked about. We don't want to do it in here; it's, it's a long conversation. But we've we've had those some pretty in-depth discussions. And I, I want to say, uh, for this project, we do lose a couple of spaces, but but as Hunter points out the, the fact that they're putting on-site parking, uh, if all of those people were forced to park on the city streets, we would be losing many more spaces, oh, sure. but they are, they are actually adding more than they're taking up, and they're also adding a handicap parking, of which in that area there's no handicap parking there, so that, that has actually an addition of one space. No, I, I like the project, I'm just you know, yeah. using that as kind of a segue. Okay. If you have that conversation, may I be part of it? Absolutely. Yes, sure. sir. All right. Just now that we had another chance to look, mm -hmm. I, did, I was curious if they had ever considered um, you put in the dumpster at the, the south side next to one of those parking spaces with a, maybe they're not available here, but I've seen these side access dumpster pickups, the trucks, where they pick them up from the side. And so I was curious if that had ever been part of the discussion to get it really on the property and accessed from the property instead of from the street. I can say we have not thought about a <coughs> access. I didn't even know that existed, but we, we, it's not my favorite spot for it. It, it. it provides an easy access and the, dump, the dumpster truck having to make the turn around that south end of the building in that narrow kind of one-way exit what was a little bit of, of a question. Um, I think that will be an ongoing evaluation and conversation, and we may be back with Hunter and his staff if we come up with a better solution. Uh, but right now, that seemed to be the most workable opportunity. We, well, we certainly have other, I mean, it's not, we have other examples of this happening. I don't think it's the end of the world. I just keep wanting to find a better spot for it. So. I, I would too, yeah. Well, and I think you pointed out probably one of the biggest challenges is uh, we, we don't have parking <laughs> meters or anything like that. So somebody could park there for two or th and leave their car for two or three days. Yeah. And the garbage could not be emptied. So I think that is a potential. You always put a sign out, no parking from, you know, midnight to, midnight to so and so Wednesday mornings or something. And, and when, when we had this discussion at the planning, at the Board of Adjustment level, um, you know, one of the things is you know, we, we, want to, we want this to work and we want guests to be happy and for this to be a, a, a good experience. And so if we have to figure out, you know, private trash or we have to figure out something else, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for this purpose and for showing what we need to show on the site plan and, and get on to building permit side, you know, this seemed to be the best solution. Sure. Well, and if you did one of those signs, you do have a, a company owner right around the corner who might just make that part of his daily route <laughs> <laughs> if you do not want your car to be included in the trash takeout do not park here on Wednesday nights all right thank you Jay 
Any other questions? Uh, I just not, have a, a quick comment. It um, it reminds me, it's a smaller scale. I mean, yours is is beautiful and lovely. I, I think it's perfect for our area, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, Collegiate Hotel in Auburn is a similar setup with the parking in the back, and I think that it, this will, this is probably even much nicer. Um, and, you know, I don't know what the city thinks about a valet system for events, but I think we have great parking out here that would be. That's certainly part of part of the game plan. To the extent that rooftop can be event space, we would highly encourage you know anybody that uses that to have valet service and, and take advantage of the parking lot across the street. Um, and, and the same goes for you know, arts and crafts or for mm -hmm. anything like that. We certainly anticipate during Mardi Gras, during arts and crafts, areas like that, we're going to have to overstaff and we're going to be parking in the city garage or we're going to be parking. You know, I've, I've told the, the Board of Adjustment, if I have to take them down to our house at Battles, we'll park them in the backyard if we need to. But I mean, it's all about managing that issue. And we recognize that parking is going to be something we have to deal with on an ongoing basis. And that, just to, the, that discussion, that was part of the evaluation because there is extra spots here on most of the year. But those big events, we're going to be blocking up this parking in, in a lot of events. So, yeah, that, but I mean, you've got the school parking yeah, lot. There, you there's know, there's, during, for all there's a lot parking. of places in uh, the Nick Center parking lot. Uh, I think that there's a lot of places. In, be in good shape. School is a good point. We've got, the city has no right. problem licensing a valet parking company. I have a 17 year old that really likes to start one up. Licensed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, I'd take this opportunity again, of, you know, working with Councilman Burrell on the, on the rooftop ordinance and the staff on this. It's been a year long project, and we really have tried to bring it into a realm of possibility that worked within the, the bounds of the ordinance and, and getting something that was economically feasible, but also provided the on-site parking that we needed. It had been a whole lot easier and a lot, lot more economical for us to go lot line to lot line and add four, five, six more rooms. But I think this is a good fit for this site and a good use for the property. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Um, any further questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, just sorry to interrupt. This, there is a public hearing for this, and we need to open the public hearing first. This one is the public hearing. That is correct. And this one does stop here. This is not, this portion does not go into the city council. So this is a public hearing. Uh, does anybody wish to speak to this item? All right. In that case, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I move we uh, approve case SD 23.02 subject to staff recommendations. I've got a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, second with Councilman Burrell. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion passes unanimously. All right, next item on the agenda, public hearing to consider the request of Jade Consulting again for uh, FST. Oh, we got that one already, excuse me. And the next item was withdrawn. And finally, public hearing. Uh, to consider the request of Seth Moore of Moore Surveying for a minor lot, two lot subdivision, uh, Morphy Avenue, nine tenths of a mile west of County Road 13. Yes, ma'am. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the owner, uh, FST Ellenberg, John W. at Tux, Belinda W. Uh, is requesting um, a two lot minor subdivision approval. It is located between Morphy Avenue and Fleming Road, west of County Road 13, and the property is zoned R2 within the city of Fairhope municipal limits. We have the zoning map and the site aerial for uh, some context, as well as the proposed subdivision plat with the site data table. Staff initially had some concerns over drainage on site. Um, the existing conveyance system was modified in 2022 without staff's review or approval. And that's kind of indicated in the two pictures below, the orange being the modification. Um, both planning and building staff conducted site visits and reached out to the Corps of Engineers to discuss the modifications. Um, and they were able to confirm that the drainage ditch modification was not in violation. 
Um, however, due to the relocation of the drainage ditch, staff requests uh, that a drainage easement be shown along the western property. Um, and we're requesting that uh, it be shown at the plat on the plat and uh, be approved by planning staff. The applicant has requested two waivers from the subdivision regulations, uh, a sidewalk installation waiver and a wetland buffer signage waiver. Staff is amenable to the sidewalk waiver. Um, an adjacent subdivision, Walker Place, um, was granted a waiver in 2020. However, staff um, is not amenable to the wetland buffer signage waiver. Um, and a condition will be the installation along the wetlands on site. Um, General comments, there are three lots that are located within 450 feet of a fire hydrant. They do front on a publicly maintained road and they do meet the minimum lot size requirements. Um, all lots shall only be accessed via Morphe Avenue and um, the final plat must be recorded within 120 days of the date of final approval. As such, staff recommends conditional approval of SD 2225 Ellenberg Place Minor Subdivision um, with the following conditions. Wetland buffer signs shall be installed and verified by code enforcement prior to plat signature by the planning department, as well as drainage discharge easement shall be added to uh, PPIN 101012 subject to staff approval. Um, be glad to answer any questions you may have and Mr. Moore is also present, the surveyor for the project. Casey, where's the third lot? There's two. There's mm -hmm. two lot, okay. I thought, yes. okay, I'm with you. Did I have an error? I, I understand. I think that the confusing thing was the drainage easement wasn't in our, or I, I didn't see it in our packet, maybe I missed it. Casey, doesn't the um, sidewalk on Morphe go to County Road 13? No. It goes uh, along it goes to, <coughs> me, 13 and crosses Morphe and goes, keeps going north. There is a newer sidewalk that goes from 13 east over to windmill, I mean, uh, Thompson That's what I'm saying. That was a project of single tax to build it, yes. so it's in within two lots of a sidewall. I think it stops at Eddington. The valuation we, we looked at the, uh, the Walker subdivision just to the one lot to the east, east. Right? west, west, west to the west. west. Um, we looked at this drain ditch there. We do have a movement that's on the flat, but you know, that, that's kind of the I've been talking to Richard Johnson about extending that the sidewalk the rest of the way along Morphe. So um, <clears throat> a lot of thought has been as these subdivisions get going, let them you know fill those spots in. Um, you know that one's two lots from the from the sidewalk. You know. This is two lots away from the sidewalk. Well, sidewalk picks up on Morphe at on County Morphe. Road 13 and goes all the way. You know, you can walk there all the way to, you know, Walmart basically on the sidewalk. Yeah. Well, um, you're, you're yeah. actually one, two, three lots. Oh, three lots. Excuse three me. lots. You're right. I stand corrected. Uh, over at least 500 feet or 600 feet to uh, <laughs> Morphe <laughs> Avenue sidewalk. But. Super tax has been just nibbling at that a piece at a time, and now you can go, you know, County Road 13. You can take back all the way to the, you know, you can get back that way to the schools and the and the ball fields, and you can take Morphe all the way out to Walmart. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it'll be paid by somebody pretty soon, but you know, when you can get it for free, why not? Well, I mean, I guess in this case also. On the front lot, it's got an existing residence. Uh, it's not like they're going to be building a residence on the front lot. It has an existing, and it typically, you know, with uh, subdivisions, you do it when the construction is. And uh, yeah. there again, now I'd like to. I mean, ask is this about a subdivision or not? I mean, it's a subdivision. I mean, is you know, we require one on the back on Fleming, but I mean, that would be silly. I'm, you know, when the construction is yeah. done then. We're not asking for that, just saying that, Correct. you know, we're trying to get all of Morphe done. And, man, those people down in the middle, not these specifically, but just a few lots to the west of here, man, you thought, you know, we were talking about coming in and putting a sewage tank in the front of their yards. They were, 
talking about you know the sidewalk was going to flood them and bring riffraff into town and you know whatnot and you know Morphe's the last major road that doesn't have a sidewalk in there now. Yeah, they said the same thing about the sidewalk in Montrose that it was going to bring riffraff. I haven't seen anybody carrying a TV on it yet, but no. <laughs> there's always I'm a first there. time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe a lot of tree stumps, but uh, <laughs> uh, but. I was wanted to ask a question about the uh, outlet easement. I mean, there's a, a 15 foot easement pretty much all the way around this property, drainage and utility easement. Mm -hmm. And the easement that we showed from where the uh, new extension of the ditch goes from the uh, existing easement over to the west property line. So I'm trying to find out where that would be. I've got the full size. So the Let's see that you have a a drainage easement all the way and this is a drainage and utility easement already. So mm -hmm. it's connecting the end of this with that easement. Mm -hmm. So staff was requesting it beyond the adjacent property just because the drainage was modified and affecting their property and we would be much more comfortable with there being an easement that they consent to with the recording of this plat just so that way that okay, the city is more comfortable with, with how it yeah I mean we can we can do that with the adjacent property Sorry. on that uh, that shouldn't be a problem but are requiring a sidewalk easement up there it's it's on the plat on the okay yeah, oh. there is a sidewalk easement all, more all along Morphe. Right. Okay. All right. Any any questions? Uh, this is a public hearing, isn't it? Thank you, Seth. I'll go ahead and open the public hearing at this time. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? In that case, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners. Chairman, uh, Motion, Mr. Chairman, I just want to let you know that planning and building staff both went to the site. We walked the site and I had direct calls and contacts with Eric Buckaloo at the core to ask about the drainage easement that was dug to connect those two areas. He said, because that was that was one of my concerns was you basically connected a drainage easement from a from an upper wet uh, jurisdictional wetlands to a lower. He said doing that actually connects jurisdictional wetlands, which he did not see as a negative thing. He was good with that. So just so you know, we looked into that with the buffer signs. The reason we want the buffer signs there is once somebody starts building, we are forever having to come back later and get onto folks for building stuff and putting fences and mowing areas in the wetland buffer. So getting those signs in so that area is delineated is helpful instead of having to come back later and correct a problem that's happened later <coughs> and making somebody have to come back and restore a wetland because they didn't know where the line was thank you and i guess my final question is is there a sidewalk easement there already because i don't see it in the staff recommendation it's it said there was it's, it's, on, there. The it's on the plat it's, it's on, on there it's a shared right in front on morphe it's a shared sidewalk utility and Okay. It may be small on what you're looking yeah, at. Well, uh, well, that's fine. I just a, wanted to make sure. But it's on the plan. Yes, sir. Because I know you know that area is a jurisdictional right of way. So, do um, you know how far that extends? Um, that sidewalk easement, just out of curiosity. From west property line to east property line, but all I mean, the way across it, the front. Does it go to any neighbors? So if we really need that um, easement, I know that's a drive, where a driveway is on the whole lot, the one that she has. Come on. Um, it goes all the way across that, because that was one of the, the questions guess. in our meeting okay. uh, in <clears> December <throat> about that, uh, and I added that to that. Okay. To make sure it does go all the way across from east to west. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if uh, I may ask a question, <clears throat> is it, and, and, and this is just a question because I feel like it, it may be a burden on the owner of the property. You mentioned this would be the opportune time to put a sidewalk. Could you put a condition of approval since we are 
allowing another lot here, uh, that at such time in the future that a sidewalk abuts the east of the property, or west side of the property and the east side of the property, sidewalks must be connected across this property. Can you make that a condition of approval? And uh, at whose expense? It would be at the owner's. It, it, but you could also have, you know, if single tax says they're going to yeah. put a sidewalk in from 13 all the way to. I mean, you could you could argue make the argument. You know, I'm satisfied. Bishop Road with or it. something. Because they, they don't have they don't have to pay rent. for it. I mean, they're paying their single tax dues, and you know, single tax has been paying for that. So you can make the argument they pay their single tax dues, and that's part of the benefit of it. You know, we mm -hmm. single tax tries to build the sidewalks and you know, front of areas with single tax houses so that, you know, you can consider that part of their dues there, you know, requiring them to do it and then single tax pays for, you know, the sidewalk on all their neighbors, you know, is that fair? I mean, I, you could argue it either way, but um, I, I'm, I'm happy with this as long as the right of way is there. I mean, we, we did, uh, not to directly, I said this in the rules, because that's kind of hard to enforce because depending on how far down the road, but one of the things with just putting the sidewalk in this area, as we, we discussed during the water review, there is a drainage there. So I think when we put a sidewalk in on this area, it's going to take a bigger picture. Uh, how those things Make sure you hit all of your elevations for ADA and everything yeah, else. And Oh, well, like I said I thought it would be more that it'd be a public works project than than that. But if you, I thought you were looking to maybe add that. We we have been under single tax, and and the city's been very kind that the city's been paying for the concrete. The single tax has been doing the installation. It's been a pretty symbiotic relationship, and we're talking to Richard Johnson because. You know, a lot of the places, you know, single tax will just go out and the guys just build it because it's just nice and flat. And you get on the premises and they say, hey, let's give this oak tree a little more space and it's easy to move. Um, as Hunter mentioned, there's some, you know, little hair in this area where you've got to worry about some ditches and some and, and you know, just trees and areas. To kind of bring you into some of our internal discussions, I think the appropriate tool we don't have in our uh, toolbox right now but when we waive the installation of this, I think we should have an in, we talked about it in lieu of fees for parking for sidewalks. So we have a flat rate when we give a waiver for installation, the easement is created and that in lieu of fee comes to the city to use uh, at a future time. But that takes some setting up those funds uh, in, a, in a single year, singular account that can only be used for those sidewalks. So that's some procedural things that we'd have to work through probably at the council and certainly with accounting to figure that out. I have one more question, Mr. Chairman. Can these individual lots be subdivided into a further minor subdivision? Uh, not unless you're going to pay for road. Uh, we do have a very, within the zoning code, when, when we say a fl what a flag lot's in, it's very specific. So Lee has a famous drawing from a couple of years ago of stacked flag lots. Yeah. That's not a possibility here. Um, <clears throat> you also, to what's in it with Jack here, you've also got a lot of wetlands mm -hmm. that yeah. you wouldn't be able to get the lot size. What is the uh, width well, on I, the I hear those arguments well, what's, a lot, what, what's, but so, somehow in 25 what, or 30 years the, from now, they magically find a way I, to I think subdivide. I think you could absolutely subdivide it again. You could, you could put yeah. right down the middle on Morphe. You could put yeah. two lots, and You'd then you could correct. put two more lots on yes. Fleming in the rear. So, well, Fleming you cannot. So you Fleming you're not because two. it's not open. Uh, it's not paved street. Uh, yeah, I guess one day if if somebody tore the house down, that's an R2, isn't it? Yes. It's R2. So you can get a maximum I'm of not two. Sure if you have the front footage. What is that 223? 223. So after you take out the ease, the the ingress egress flag, mm -hmm. it's 180. And R2 minimum width standard is 75. So you could get, could get two lots, but the house would have to come down completely. Yeah. To yeah. make that happen. I don't think that this, that this body needs to start looking at some regulations that once you subdivide into a minor subdivision, if they try to subdivide the minor subdivisions into further minor subdivisions as a way to just completely keep adding lots, it needs to that. revert back to the original underlying. Plat and then follow all the 
rules and regulations of the original plat. That's, that's the way I know at least one county handled it. Uh, I thought we had a restriction of how many times it could subdivide. Right. Uh, I thought it was only twice. There's been a lot of jurisdictional changes. So this, anything in the zoning ordinance, each lot would have to meet zoning. And there's, there's, um, so uh, to Councilman Braille's point, I think that is something to consider when things are being bypassed, you know, we're just minor, minor, minor to it, to get around, um, regulations yeah, could we have a trigger that turns it into a major subdivision if it had been previously subdivided? I think there's a way to do that I would think that would be on the when on the front end when somebody submits an application as more as you know that you know the understanding that we're reviewing this is a minor if anything triggers this within a probably have to do a period of time um, whether that's two years, five years, you know, you wouldn't want to go 70 years down the road. Um, you might have 15 different owners since then, and that gets a little muddy. But I think that's the maybe the appropriate place, but probably going to lean on the legal team, too, to help help us figure those, those requirements out. Yeah, there'd have to be some amendments to the regulations, obviously. Um, and I think Holly may have been thinking of some of the changes to the law, the county, so outside of the city limits, the new law changed the family subdivision and put restrictions on that. And that may be what you're thinking about where there is, and maybe we can follow some of that language to, to come up with our own inside the city limits, but that law doesn't apply inside the city limits. And there was some, lo there was an evolution in those family <coughs> that said, Art, you were on the planning commission, you couldn't, at the county, you couldn't, transfer that within two years or sell that, um, you know, f for the family exemption or have to come back in. Um, I don't know if they're still doing that's that. That's a new, uh, that's well, a we can look new at that. Let's go ahead and move on yeah, with this. Sure. Uh, any other questions about this specific item? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion, Mr. Chairman, SD 2225 Ellenberg Place. I move that we approve subject staff recommendations with a Sidewalk easement reflected on. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed say nay. I got it. <coughs> now that that's done, let me, let me, I know we've talked about this before, but it, I think it's really important. And do we need to be in, open in the meeting or can we? I'm sorry, what? Do we need to still keep the meeting open? Yeah, you keep the meeting open. Well, you got somewhere to be? The, um, yeah. the issue has to do with, uh, as an example, would be on Gaffer, Gaffer Avenue, where I'm assuming it's either, I'm assuming that's the city doing that, doing the work on Gaffer. Is that right? It's a right uh, state, city, county project. The, the, the point is, it's not the work that's being done, but it's where the sidewalk is. Now that we're talking about sidewalks again, the sidewalk, we're doing absolutely nothing in my opinion, um, in terms of protecting those that use these sidewalks by having approximately six inches uh, from the edge of the pavement to the beginning of the sidewalk. We had a situation, I, I think I've told you all this before, um, a situation in Spring Hill once upon a time, sidewalk just like that, somebody jumped the curb and killed three little children walking to uh, St. Ignatius. The point is, is that we have no, we have no barrier at all in a lot of our sidewalks. And if we're going to have sidewalks like this, we need to do something to protect, especially the kids. But the kids are going to walk to school, for example, on on Gaper. My goodness gracious, I wouldn't want my kid walking there. People don't go 25 miles an hour on Gaper. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a horrible little street to start off with. But when you've got sidewalks that are that close, now maybe we, it's a curb. Maybe we need a curb to protect our uh, protect the edges of the sidewalk. But something's got to be that's got to be figured out because we've got a bunch of these places <coughs> where this is the situation. And if we continue to do it, all we're doing is is asking for uh, for a big lawsuit. And I just think, I, I think it's time to start focusing on that. It is a real problem. So that's all I got. Oh, that's great. 
Well, that's another thing you bring up is, you know, why doesn't the municipalities <coughs> come for 1152-11s? Like, you know, AT&T does and C Spire does, but whenever the municipality, you know, has a project, um, they used to come for 1152-11s, and I don't know when that ceased. Um, From 2007, best I can tell. Well, it, some have. Um, or have went through the Board of Adjustment, but I don't think this is the time or place for these discussions. So. No, I, I agree, but I think that might be something to be looked into. You know, and see, because a lot of things, you know, first I was kind of wondering why in the world you have an 1152-11 when you don't really have a lot of, you know, leeway to deny, you know, a lot of these different projects. But as I've been on them, I think that sometimes just, you know, airing stuff out, you get a lot of really good input from people that say, I remember, you know, one time a project was about to get going and Gary Moore, who's, you know, on the board said, you know, by the way, you know, y'all are going through 17 people's uh, front yards where you don't have a right of way, you know, down on Mobile Avenue um, and, you know, saved a heck of a expensive lawsuit just by having a set of eyes that happened to have, you know, looked down on those uh, you know, looked on those surveys recently, just kind of threw that out and saved somebody a lot of money. We had some, you know, successes tying sidewalks in up there to the uh, to the elementary school, you know, up on uh, Section Street as well. So I think just because the more people see it and saying, hey, why don't we, you know, work this together? Okay. So just an idea that, you know, council, you know, might want to look into and think about. Okay. Um, and, and just a a quick update there is one more agenda item um, that's the subdivision re uh, regulation amendments we talked about a little bit last month I want to give you an update um, when when I think the goal was to clarify a, a big set of documents for jurisdictional things that have evolved over the course of probably 30 years and once we started getting into that started pulling strings and I just have one slide, but I want to show you uh, an example and, and really get you to think about some things. The rural subdivisions, uh, when it comes to standards that they have to install, this was always when there's somebody's doing 20 acres or more, you know, they're, they're exempt from a lot of the big uh, road standards, things like that. It was more rural. When you get to this, the first requirement there is has to be entirely outside of the city limits. So one way to look at that is, we'll just strike this whole section. I, I, I'm advising on this one, um, we probably don't wanna do that because there might be opportunities to annex some larger pieces of land that might want 20 acres. I, I even would propose, let's, let's look at making 10 acre lots. You know, there might be a rule, but that's probably a conversation we need to have uh, when it gets into some of these details. So we certainly did not get that opportunity to send you a red line for the whole subdivision regulations. Um, hope we'll be able to do that and get you some things to discuss and probably be reaching out before the meeting, um, probably on a one-on-one, -on -one, one, you know, with a couple at a time to, to get some feedback before we, we come back next month with, with a final red line. But that's just an update. Um, since it was advertised and on the agenda, I wanted to touch base with that, but we don't have anything to propose to change tonight. Right. Well, I move to adjourn. I move we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 No further discussion.